In this video, I'm going to show you how to apply different sets of details in the task form view. You know when you apply what is called the task entry view, Microsoft Project displays the Gantt chart view in the top pane and the task form view in the bottom pane. But what most people don't realize is that you can apply different sets of details in the task form pane. By details, I mean different sets of columns and fields. Some of those sets of details are really useful. For example, suppose that you need to pre-plan overtime work for a task. Well, with the right set of details applied, it's really easy to do that. So let's get started. Before you can use the task form view, you need to apply the task entry view. The fastest way to do that is to right mouse click anywhere in the white part of the Gantt chart screen and on the shortcut menu to choose Show Split. In the top pane, we see the Gantt chart view, and in the bottom pane, there it is, the task form view. To see the sets of details available in the task form view, simply right mouse click anywhere in the task form. There are the sets of details available for the task form view. By the way, what are these details or sets of details I'm talking about? A set of details is simply a set of fields and columns that are displayed in the task form view. The default set of details is known as resources and predecessors. This is the set of details you can use for assigning resources to tasks. So for example, for the task order server, I'd like to assign Richard Sanders. He's going to work about one quarter time or 25% units. When I click the OK button, Richard is assigned to the task. By the way, when I right click again, there's a companion set of details known as resources and successors. And the truth is the only difference with this set of details is you see a column named successor name in place of the column named predecessor name. So let's go ahead and take a look at another set of details and this one I find very interesting. It's called predecessors and successors. This is a set of details that you can actually use for specifying task dependency relationships. So for example, on task number three, I'd like its predecessor to be task number two, order server. The dependency relationship I want is the default finish to start, but I do want eight days of lag time to account for the amount of time we need to wait for the server to be delivered after it's been ordered. When I click the OK button, there, I just set task dependencies using this set of details. Let's take a look at another interesting set of details. This is known as the schedule details. This particular set of details is useful. When you have multiple resources assigned to a task, but they cannot all start at the same time. That's our situation with Mickey, Carmen, and Audrey. Mickey can start on day one. Good. Carmen, however, will be delayed starting by two days. So I'll put two days in the delay field. She has work commitments in another project, so she's going to come on two days later than Mickey. We have a similar situation with Audrey Curley. She can't start until three days later, again due to a commitment on another project. 
So here's the way it'll work. Mickey will start on day one. Two days later, Carmen will start. Three days later, Audrey will start. And when I click the OK button, Microsoft Project will reschedule the work for each of the resources so that their schedule matches the delays that I entered. And Microsoft Project will also recalculate the duration from five days to eight days to account for the delays that are taking place. Now let's scroll down here to another task. Create Training Module 01. And let me bring up another interesting set of details known as the Work Details. The Work set of details is useful if you need to plan in advance for overtime work to be done on a task. That is my situation entirely. I have Terry Euland assigned to this task. He's working full time for 20 days. That's 160 hours of work. That's full time work. But we've absolutely got to get this task done sooner. In this overtime work column, this is where I can say how many extra hours we want Terry to work on this task beyond the normal eight hours per day. I'm going to say we need Terry to work 32 hours of overtime out of the grand total of 160. When I click the OK button, Microsoft Project recalculates the duration as 16 days. Now here's the way it works out. 160 hours of work will still be done spread out over 16 days. 160 divided by 16 means Terry needs to work 10 hours per day on this task to get done earlier. Now, next thing we'll do, let's go ahead and select a different task and I'll show you a set of details known as cost. The truth is, this is really just for view purposes only. It lets you see the cost information for the resource or resources assigned to a task. So example for Marilyn Ray, I can see the total cost of her work is $960. That is also the baseline amount. She has done some actual work on this task, so there's an actual cost of 480 and a remaining cost of 480. This is just for lucky see purposes. You probably will never want to change anything here. Now let me go back up to an earlier task, task number eight, and let me show you the final set of details that are useful. This is the notes set of details. When you select the notes details, this lets you see any notes that have been added to the task using the task information dialog. I did want to alert you that on the shortcut menu, there actually is one additional set of details known as objects. But the truth is, you can't do anything with it. All you can do is see if objects have been inserted on the task using the task information dialog. For example, a very old way of using Microsoft Project is to insert task-related documents on the task itself. But in this task form set of details called objects, you can't actually do anything with it. It's looky-see only. When you're done working with different sets of details in the task form, I did want to caution you that you'll probably always want to go back to the default set of details, which is resources and predecessors. Based on my experience, I think you'll find that will make your life a little easier. So there you have it. That's how to use the sets of details that are available to you in the task form view. Well, 
Now you know there's way more than meets the eye to that task form view. I sure hope you found this video to be helpful to you. If you did, consider giving it a like. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification button as well. If you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to respond. As always, I'll see you in my next video.